Hi, uh, greetings for, from uh, very cloudy Slovenia. Uh, last month, uh, we waded into the hottest uh, season in a year, and we thought that it might be appropriate to uh, talk about what birds do in summer. Uh, first, wha uh, what are the characteristics of, of a summer? Of course, we uh, start a summer in a, uh, by ca calendar, but uh, what, are, what are those ca characteristics that define, uh, separate summer from other seasons? The first thing is that the sun is uh, high, uh, highest uh, above the earth and it warms up uh, the entire uh, northern hemisphere. Of course, we are talking about summer uh, in the northern hemisphere in the temperate regions. Uh, so the sun is the most intensive, temperatures are highest, um, then, depending on the region, a lot of rain or none uh, rain at all, storms. Uh, and this is all, uh, all the uh, challenges that birds fa face uh, in, in this season. Uh, also, uh, crops are, uh, some crops are ending, uh, like uh, uh, wheat or barley. Uh, some, uh, some crops are uh, at the height of their product productivity. Uh, and uh, due to the high evaporation rate and uh, low or n non-existing water, the um, vegetation starts slowly uh, to turn into a golden, which uh, we associate with, with, with summer. Uh, what do we do when summer hits? Well, for most, uh, uh, most of us, the, this is the season of, for vacation. Uh, most schools are out. Um, we think of going to, to the sea, uh, to the mountains, just relaxing. Um, this is the, the period wh where, uh, where, where we, uh, when we uh, consume a lot of uh, refreshing drinks, uh, ice cream is on the menu. Uh, we are looking for the shade and refreshments in either uh, at the coast or uh, lakes or even uh, rivers uh, where we uh, uh, when, where we when we can. Uh, what about birds? Well, in general, I can tell you that parts of uh, what birds do is the same as what we do. Some of them go uh, to the coast. Some of them go to the mountains. They uh, visit the the coasts, lakes, uh, they also uh, try to find uh, cool uh, places, uh, they stay in the shade. Uh, their activity, at least in the parts of the day, uh, is reduced. Um, and also they are uh, trying to uh, ma uh, get as much baths uh, as they can. So in that retrospect, they are doing as much uh, similar things that we are doing. Uh, on the other hand, not so much. This is the season uh, the same as all others. They are trying to survive, trying to um, get, uh, get ahead. Uh, some of them are finishing uh, breed uh, breeding season. Some of them are already thinking uh, ahead of for, for migration, for next season. So, and summer is perfect for that because uh, the, the spring uh, that, is, uh, that ended uh, left a lot of food sources for uh, most of the birds. And this is the period where, uh, when they are trying to get as much of that food inside uh, and try to prepare for later seasons. Uh, when comparing summer to other uh, seasons, summer is also the most complex uh, period when considering what birds do. When we think of winter, well, most of the birds are just trying to survive. They, they already are at the wintering um, stages. They, uh, uh, there are some birds that do some, some other uh, stages of their lives, like breeding, migrating, but the majority is just uh, trying to sur survive the, the winter. Uh, early spring and autumn is migration time. Uh, and spring also adds some breeding activity. Uh, on the other hand, uh, as you will see through this um, uh, lecture, uh, summer is quite different and it's uh, really complex. 
So as I said, uh, this period is, uh, regardless of what they're doing, they're trying to take advantage of uh, abundant food sources that are uh, present in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, so although we associate uh, nesting uh, with spring, which is uh, understandable since most of the uh, nesting starts uh, at the, uh, in the spring, and mo uh, some of it is already finished by, by the end of sp uh, the spring, uh, a lot, many species, actually a lot of them, are still breeding or continue breeding throughout the, uh, thr throughout the, uh, uh, the summer. Uh, when we are thinking which birds are breeding in summer, some of them are just uh, late starters. Some uh, water bird uh, species or raptors uh, start nesting uh, very late, uh, maybe uh, as late as June, uh, which means that by July and August they are still uh, in the middle of the nesting and trying, uh, they are trying to rear their youngs. Um, the majority of species that do that uh, either are or in the in the habitat uh, in in a, in a habitat that is um, rich in food late in summer, or there is no difference uh, in the richness of food to, uh, between uh, spring or summer, or the the majority of food is later in the in the season. There, are, uh, for uh, I I show you here two examples. One of them is crested grebe, uh, North Amer uh, North uh, no, European um, breeding bird. Uh, which can start uh, as early as April, but some of them uh, remain at the breeding uh, site uh, and start breeding as late, as I said, uh, as June. Um, some of them, for example, uh, as those uh, in this picture are waiting for water plants to, uh, to start growing, and since uh, plants in water start a bit later the, uh, than uh, on the land, uh, they are waiting for uh, for those plants to uh, to be uh, sufficient enough so they can build up the nest uh, in the middle of the water. Uh, they feed on fish, and small fish are abundant uh, all the way from March to uh, till autumn. The other species uh, shown on the uh, on the screen is uh, hobby. Uh, it's a raptor. Uh, that catches small birds. Um, this one is actually quite adapted to, uh, in catching uh, swallows and martins um, that are also late nesters uh, and have, um, have a lot of young uh, uh, flying about in late summer. And also it feeds on large insects like uh, uh, dragonflies, which are also very abundant during the summer. So uh, it takes advantage of a late uh, food source and for him it pays to uh, start breeding late. Uh, another group of birds that uh, still breed uh, or are still in the nesting period in the, uh, in the summer are large raptors that although they start vi uh, very early with breeding, for example, griffon vulture that starts already in February, March, or osprey that starts in April. Uh, they are big birds. They uh, need a much longer period for juveniles to uh, reach uh, flying ca uh, capability, and their uh, breeding season extends far in, in, into the summer. Uh, as said, uh, the reason why they are still nesting in the summer is uh, bec because of uh, their size, but also they, they can afford to do that because their uh, food source is abundant all, all, all through, the, uh, through the year, or at least uh, um, through spring and the entire summer, uh, and there's no reason why they couldn't do that. Well, there is another uh, group of uh, birds that nest uh, in the summer and that group is uh, those that have several clutches in a year. Some of uh, them like chickadees, titmouses, tits, uh, they have maybe two, uh, rarely three clutches uh, in a year but they are, uh, the most of them f uh, finish in spring. Uh, some of them have third or fourth clutch and like uh, red starts or uh, blackbirds, 
uh, European, so, uh, so common blackbird. Uh, so they extend the third or fourth uh, uh, clutch into the, into the summer. Well, some uh, bird species uh, nest all through the year. They s slow their breeding maybe in a, in a cold period, so during the winter, but feral pigeon uh, present all over the world uh, can nest all through the year. So as long as there is food, it, it may nest. So summer is no exception uh, f for this species as well. It's funny, but uh, even though, as I said, the majority of, of migration is tied to the either spring or autumn, it is very hard to find the period within the year that birds are not migrating. Either because there are a lot of species uh, that start breeding uh, in very different periods of time and they are uh, breeding in very different latitudes, uh, it's very easy to find a bird that's migrating at any uh, point in time. Um, summer, in, in this retrospect, is n n not an exception. Uh, most of the birds that are migrating now, for example, already, are, uh, that finished, uh, are already finished with breeding uh, in northern latitudes. Uh, but as summer progresses, also a lot of our birds will be uh, migrating. Uh, as I, as, as I said, uh, a lot of birds from northern latitudes are finishing with their breeding. Um, uh, at this point, uh, many, uh, many of us can wonder where uh, the bird is, uh, is a resident or uh, where, where the bird is native in, in, in some sense. For example, the Arctic tern spends uh, only two, three months uh, at the breeding sites and uh, the other nine months traveling around, uh, actually almost, uh, actually the lo uh, it spends longer period in the wintering quarters than in, in the breeding, uh, at the breeding sites. Uh, the, here are two examples of birds already uh, in migration uh, in, in summer, one of them is, uh, Acrocephalus wobbler, in this case marsh wobbler, that is one of the earliest migrati uh, migrating birds in Europe uh, on the return uh, journey. It uh, arrives in May, uh, some of them uh, even late May, but it already uh, is beginning to leave uh, no, uh, Europe and Asia in, uh, in July. Um, and most of the adults already leave way before the autumn uh, starts leaving just few uh, juveniles uh, uh, behind so they, uh, they will follow them. Uh, the other one is a Temmings uh, stint. Uh, it's also a species that nests uh, high in the Arctic and it finishes its breeding season uh, as soon as possible and uh, starts returning uh, south. Uh, many waders have a, a specific strategy that females when they are done with incubating uh, or even before, uh, they are already returning and migrating south, leaving males with their chicks, uh, uh, to uh, leave, uh, leaving their males to tend to the chicks uh, so they are fully grown. And even before the chicks are ready to migrate, males are migrating uh, second after the females and the third, uh, the third uh, group of uh, p uh, individuals in, in those species are juveniles uh, fo uh, following their adults. Uh, when we are talking about migration, some of the sp uh, species are not just moving south or north, but they are also moving high or down in the mountains. Um, the majority of this kind of uh, migration uh, happens in autumn, of course, when uh, snow comes early in, uh, in high peaks and birds of high uh, altitudes are moving down towards the valleys. But we also have some species that nest lower down and start moving up the mountain as summer progresses. 
the, uh, those are usually species that are either tied to specific kind of food or uh, lower temperatures and they nest early in the season uh, and when the temperatures are rising the food comes more scarce they move up in the mountains some species like uh, griffin vulture which was uh, which i shown uh, before also uh, moves high in the mountains but not because of the cold uh, temperature or uh, lack of uh, food sources all the way around, but simply because uh, snow retreated from high mountains, uh, leaving behind uh, some unfortunate uh, animals, and th those are actually very good f uh, food source. Uh, also, some animals, uh, some big hoofed animals, move up the mountains uh, for fresher grass which means that there is also a high potential for uh, uh, casualties and griffin vultures are uh, trying to explore that. Uh, as I said, this period is very complex. So we have nesting, uh, a lot of uh, p uh, bird species are nesting. We have migration, which is uh, typical for other uh, seasons, but we also have molting. Uh, molting, which means change, uh, that birds change their feathers. Um, mol uh, some birds molt just after the, the breeding, so most of the molting in, uh, in the summer is, uh, is uh, firstly tied to juveniles. Um, when they are um, in their nest, they are trying to uh, grow up as fast as possible and everybody knows that when you're doing, uh, trying to do something very, very fast, uh, you're bound to make a mistake and this is what happens with uh, feathers of juveniles. They are not very um, sturdy, so they ju just after leaving the nest, uh, they uh, go through the molt and they change most of the body feathers for uh, a new one. So a lot of them uh, after that look uh, like um, adults or at least uh, some kind of adult. Uh, 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 many species look like uh, females after that, um, s some uh, look like a an adult. But also some species uh, are al already beginning the mold uh, as adults. So this is the period where uh, a lot of uh, molting is happening, even though maybe autumn is more characteristic for, for this uh, behavior. There is a, a, a group of birds that do both of, the, uh, both of those things, so migrate and molt. Um, here is, the bar is a barnacle goose, which is a, uh, no, uh, which is a, a one group of birds, geese, uh, most of the geese species are breeding in, in high Arctic and they, are, uh, they fatten up uh, and they rear their youngs uh, at the nesting sites, but very soon uh, in the middle of the summer they migrate to traditional molting sites where they are mostly safe. Um, the, their type of molt is actually a complete molt of flight feathers, which means that uh, for a period of time they are unable to fly. Uh, they lose their own flight, flight feathers and uh, they are unable to get away from pr uh, land predators. Uh, that's why the, the, all of geese, uh, many duck species, choose their molting site ba uh, mostly based on predator-free predator uh, environment. <coughs> so. They actually first migrate, but not to the south. Uh, in many cases, they uh, even fly, uh, migrate north or west or east. Uh, so it doesn't really matter the direction, uh, depending on where the traditional uh, staging area is. Uh, there they gather in huge numbers that can uh, reach over 100,000 birds. Uh, they gather there, uh, they feed as much as they can and they change their feathers. When they, are, uh, when they change, the, uh, change their feathers, then they start the next part of the, the migration. Uh, this is a goosander uh, that uh, breeds uh, all through the northern hemisphere. Uh, including North America, Europe and, and Asia. This is a typical species that, uh, as, as I mentioned before, migrates north instead of the s south uh, in the summer. 
Of course, after the molt is complete, uh, it migrates uh, south again. Uh, in Europe, there is a population in Alps and even uh, further south uh, where they, they breed. And after the breeding period is ov over, the, the nestlings are uh, able to fly. Uh, they mostly disappear from, from, uh, from Central Europe, most of them migrating uh, north to traditional uh, breeding si um, molting sites. After they change their uh, feathers, uh, they look the, them old uh, again, uh, they return to, to, to Central Europe. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, one of the biggest characteristics of summer is that there is abundance of food. Uh, high energy due to the high sun intensity, long, uh, long days. Uh, so this is the opportunity for birds to fatten up. Uh, either before they start migration or for molting or simply uh, for, the, uh, for the winter. This is the period where food is so abundant that it's the easiest period uh, for, for young birds to actually learn how to find food, uh, hunt for the food. Um, this is actually the, the biggest reason why most of birds are breeding in, in spring. Not only because uh, food is already abundant uh, at that time, but also because after they stop uh, breeding in, in spring, they have two, three months of relatively easy, uh, easy gathering period. So easy gathering, uh, easy uh, period for gathering food that is re relatively easy. It's still uh, difficult, uh, but uh, I if you imagine a lot of berries uh, are ripening in, 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 the, in, in summer, insects are abundant in summer, so a lot of food is present. Uh, so this spe uh, species was mentioned in the previous uh, Bird Academy le lecture. Uh, I mentioned it uh, in, in, retrospect, uh, in respect with uh, migration. It's uh, a species with the longest non-stop non flight recorded. It's a bar-tailed godwit. Uh, as soon as it starts bre uh, stops breeding, it migrates uh, short distance to a staging area that is in high abundance of food and they start fattening, uh, fattening up. This is something that is very uh, usual for a lot of vader species in the northern uh, hemispheres, but also uh, for some species uh, lower down uh, in uh, middle uh, latitudes. Uh, as mentioned, birds that, st that sta sta stop breeding in spring uh, follow, uh, fo uh, follow uh, uh, adults, so their parents, for food. Uh, many times, and you, you also could, uh, could have seen that in a bird body, young birds are capable of flying, but they have no experience whatsoever. Uh, one of them is actually how to find food. Uh, you, you may have seen uh, photos or videos, young birds sitting by the tray uh, on, the on the feeder, just by the food, uh, begging the adult for, uh, for food, even though it was maybe a few centimeters from it. it in this period, after breeding through the early summer and midsummer, uh, they need to uh, re uh, learn how to find food, how to recognize it, how to uh, maybe get to it. Some of the food is hard to get to uh, if it's in, in the nut or uh, hidden or in a shell. Uh, so this is uh, something they uh, need to learn. Uh, also, this is a period where they need to gather as much as, uh, food as possible. Uh, and expanding as little as possible, simply because some of them are still growing, some of them are uh, so, uh, and some of them are changing feathers. Like this eastern bluebird, you can see it; it's in juvenile feathers. 
uh, it has semi-adult flight feathers, so with the blue color, but you can, uh, you can see uh, on, the, on top of the head and on, on the back it, uh, it's brown, uh, very uncharacteristic for a bluebird, which is, uh, completely, uh, has completely uh, blue back and head. Uh, so it needs to change the, f uh, the feathers, which simply means a lot of food, a lot of energy. Uh, and if it, if it needed to find food in this period, the, the whole process would be longer and much slower. Uh, longer and slower simply means a uh, difference between life and death. Um, it can be easier, uh, easier for, for predators to get to it. Uh, it could be easier to, uh, to, su to be subdued by uh, poor, poor weather. So uh, in this period, they are really gaining experience in just getting your, uh, uh, around in, in, in the environment. Uh, so this is uh, a typical uh, f photo of juveniles following uh, adults. Uh, you have an uh, adult st uh, starling at the right uh, lower edge. Uh, gathering food, which in this case is very easy, and two very, very hungry and clearly uh, unexperienced uh, juveniles. Uh, you can separate them uh, by, by their plumage, so the uh, beak of the adult is yellow, the, the whole uh, body feather, uh, most of the body feathers are almost black with ir iridescent uh, uh, sheen. Uh, juveniles have dark bills with uh, grayish uh, plumage and very, uh, they are very loud. Uh, they are following adults and trying to learn, learn their, their way. As I said, uh, they are practically standing on food but they, are, they don't recognize it. Uh, this is something that most birds of prey have to learn in, in the nest. So when they go out, they are learning how to catch uh, prey. So that's why actually it's very important to have a period of high food abundance. Uh, in this case, uh, if you imagine starlings and uh, also bluebird, uh, as nestlings, they are living in a, in a cavity. Uh, it's quite dark and they have to compete with other siblings uh, to, uh, for the food uh, from adults, which simply means that they do not have the time to uh, memorize how every morsel looks like. Uh, and also um, food that is provided for them in spring may be completely different from what they need to eat in summer or later in, uh, in, in the autumn. That's why uh, they go in kind of a prolonged uh, school period. Um, so they, um, they, they can uh, get, to, uh, they can take care of themselves later. Uh, this also brings us to a, a certain problem. When you, when you find a, a juvenile that, f that has fallen out of the nest, uh, it's f first, uh, First problem we uh, we tackle is whether or not it survives. So if it's smaller, uh, if it's big enough, uh, it it may survive. So it they don't need to uh, get enough. Uh, they don't need to uh, get additional uh, warmth from the surroundings, but they they do need to get food. And this is the least of the problem. It, although it still may take you. Uh, the entire day of every maybe 20, 30 minutes giving them something to eat. Uh, but the biggest problem here is that after they, are, they learn how to fly, uh, you may, uh, it is time for, to let them go, to put them in, back in the nature. Uh, but this is where the difficulty starts. Uh, you cannot go after them, learning, uh, teaching them how to uh, find food, uh, Learn, uh, teaching them how to avoid predators. Uh, for some species, it pays to find another flock and uh, release the reared bird uh, with them. Uh, that definitely raises the chance of their survival. Uh, now, this brings us to uh, what birds need in summer. So what we need in summer is, as said, uh, cold drinks, 
uh, a shade, uh, shade somewhere or an, and an ice cream. Um, birds, on the other hand, do need to, uh, the shade. Uh, a lot of them are actually, if you pay attention, walking around in woods, uh, in the morning they are active, uh, even though the, the singing has, redu uh, ha has reduced uh, considerably after the spring, uh, they are still uh, uh, singing or just making noises in, in the morning. Um, you can see them trying to catch food, uh, moving about, but as the heat, uh, day heats up, you can see that their activity slows considerably. Uh, there are several reasons for that, but most of, of it is tied to temperature and also, uh, uh, yeah, so temperature, which means that if it's um, 100 degrees outside um, uh, Fahrenheit uh, and birds can uh, overheat easily if they, um, if they need to do something uh, intensive. Uh, they don't need to t take care of their uh, uh, thermoregulation, so they, d they don't need to stay warm because of their environment. So they actually conserve energy in this retrospect uh, by simply uh, being inactive somewhere in, in the shade if, if it's possible. So uh, there are some species that uh, are active in the middle of the day, but most of them are not. Uh, so they do need uh, some r refreshments uh, in, form, in the form of uh, shade. But there is also something much more important uh, for birds in summer, and this is something that you can provide also uh, in your back backyard, or actually it's the simplest uh, way to know where the birds gather if you don't have a feeder or, and you're just uh, walking in the woods. Uh, that's a water source. Uh, besides drinking, which is surprisingly not the main uh, attractant for, for birds, but they do need to drink, especially in the summer, and especially species that are uh, feeding on dry seeds, um, they do need to uh, get a lot of water. So uh, if you uh, have some pool somewhere, some small pool for, uh, for, for them to, uh, to drink, that's, that's perfect. Uh, you can also, if you live in an area which is mostly dry, uh, but you have uh, some pond somewhere, you can be sure that at that pond there will be a lot of birds uh, coming to drink uh, in the middle of the day. Uh, but drinking is just one part of uh, the attra attraction of, uh, uh, of water for birds. The other one, which is surprisingly more uh, important in most of, uh, most of the summer, uh, is bathing. Um, they need to take care of their plumage, their feathers, uh, and their feathers are unfortunately very attractive for a lot of parasites like mites, lice, and bathing is the same as for us they uh, remove uh, excess, uh, that, uh, excess tissue that, that's, uh, uh, that is dead uh, on their body, like dandruff or um, parts of feathers. Uh, and by removing that, they also remove uh, a lot of um, uh, parasites or unwanted guests. Um, birds don't only use water uh, for bathing. Uh, some of them, and you may have already seen this, uh, they are bathing in, in the sand. So they find some fine sand, uh, some maybe on, a, on some uh, dirt road or by the road or even on the uh, uh, open fields. Uh, so the, they need it to be really dry and really fine grained and they if you look at them, they are, they are actually the same uh, as, the, as if they are bathing in water. Uh, they are moving about, fl flopping their uh, wings, um, throwing uh, sand uh, on their backs. Uh, it's interesting to look at them uh, and this, is, this clearly shows that, um, this has, uh, that bathing in the water has some other uh, benefits uh, uh, apart from uh, staying fresh. Uh, 
when, when you're thinking about where to place the water, uh, it's very good to place it in the shade, but still in the open. So uh, in the open, so they, are, um, they have uh, a chance to uh, see uh, predators coming, uh, predators in this case being uh, domestic cats, uh, but in the shade uh, so that the water doesn't heat up uh, and uh, evaporates too soon or the algae uh, starts to it takes longer for algae to uh, start to form. So one major um, requirement for birds in, in the summer uh, is water. So think of that when either you're looking for them or you are trying to take care of them in, in your garden. Uh, the other major uh, requirement for birds are, is food. Uh, as mentioned several times during this uh, lecture uh, or this presentation, uh, food is really abundant in this part of the year and it's really important for birds in this part of the year. So either to get uh, gain energy so they can finish up growth or they can m uh, change their feathers or they uh, get the reserves for, uh, for, for migration or, or winter. Uh, but this is, uh, the food is important for, for birds in, all, uh, in every season, but in this part they are looking for m several types of food that are not really abundant in other uh, periods. Uh, and one of, of them uh, are insects. So um, insects the summer is actually a period, uh, a period where, uh, when insects dominate. Uh, grasshoppers, uh, cicadas, uh, um, dragonflies, flies, uh, mosquitoes especially, everybody, anybody that go, goes into marshland looking for birds or lives by some, uh, some kind of wetland knows that this is the period for uh, mosquitoes, a lot of them. Uh, this also means that the majority of birds that are migrating from southern uh, hemisphere or in the, uh, from the tropics to northern hemisphere or northern latitudes to, uh, to, to nest feed on insects. A lot of late comers, including as mentioned before Hobby, Marsh, Wobbler, are uh, specialists on, on insects and this is the type of food they are, uh, they are eating uh, at this, uh, this time period. So if you have also s some birds that you can attract to seeds, e either in summer but mostly in autumn and winter, still f uh, feed on, uh, on insects in summer. And <coughs> You can attract them to, let's say, feeders uh, more easily if you add some, let's say, mealworms uh, to the mix of, of your f uh, in your feeder. Uh, <coughs> those uh, birds uh, that eat insects are actually also those that uh, migrate first uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the wintering grounds and uh, mostly in the tropics. Um, a lot of them are uh, very brightly colored like this bee eater or even more uh, brightly colored like uh, a roller which also eats uh, rodents. Uh, another source of food that is really really abundant during the summer uh, as we all know uh, as, uh, and as I mentioned at the beginning grains are being harvested uh, mostly uh, at this moment. Uh, in this time period, uh, the leftovers from grains are very good substrate for um, explosion of, for, of rodents and this is the kind of food they are, uh, a lot of uh, uh, birds are looking for in this time period. Uh, another uh, type of food already mentioned uh, in this lecture and it's really, really important and you can also make sure that it is um, present uh, on the feeder uh, is any type of fruit. Uh, 
summer, late summer, early, early autumn is the period where a lot of fruit is available. Uh, a lot of uh, birds that feed on insects uh, during the nesting period also feed on um, berries or uh, other uh, types of food in, uh, in other parts of, uh, of the year. And you can attract a lot of them by providing, uh, let's say, food on your, uh, on your feeders, either uh, really uh, water-rich foods like, uh, fruits like uh, citruses or uh, watermelons or really fatty food, uh, fruits like uh, avocados. Uh, but uh, especially the further south you go, uh, fruits have become more and more important. And in the tropics, if you really want to attract um, birds to the feeder, feeding station or uh, to the feeder, uh, fruits are essential, either uh, like uh, either fruits like bananas or mangoes. Uh, so uh, if you have an opportunity, uh, I uh, the best way to attract birds to your uh, garden is to have f f fruiting trees or f fruiting uh, bushes in the garden, uh, especially native uh, species which actually attract more birds and birds gain more from them. Um, they eat the fruits the already um, flowering in uh, in the uh, fruiting in uh, ripening in, uh, in the summer, and this may continue uh, all in in the autumn. Uh, of course, another type of food source which is uh, important or relevant uh, all through the. Uh, warm parts of the year is uh, nectar um, and most of them of course in the North America uh, when we talk about nectar people think of hummingbirds in North America as well as in uh, uh, South America um, in parts of uh, in parts of Asia and most of Africa we talk about sunbirds and honey eaters in Australia and this is a high. Uh, this is very important source of food, uh, especially because uh, birds that I uh, birds that I mentioned are very uh, tight or very uh, dependent on uh, nectar, and especially in areas where uh, native vegetation has been cleared uh, due to development or agriculture. Uh, Providing uh, native uh, flowering bird uh, bushes or f uh, flowers uh, or uh, nectar feeders, it's uh, very, uh, a very good thing uh, for uh, hummingbirds, but also for conservation of them uh, and a lot of other species. Uh, for example, ho uh, hooded uh, uh, oriole that uh, really likes to uh, visit um, hummingbird, uh, uh, hummingbird feeders. Um, although not a hummingbird, but if, you, uh, if there is a perch, he will sit on it and uh, try to eat it. Uh, in Europe, we don't have the luxury to have a, uh, birds that are um, specialized on nectar, but especially in southern uh, part of Europe, you may still uh, try uh, to use it and to attract some other birds that are uh, just occasionally feeding on nectar. Uh, today I was a bit shorter than the last time and I am uh, concluding uh, my uh, presentation. I am open to, uh, for the questions and I am opening a Q&A section and waiting for your questions. Uh, so please, uh, Gi uh, I'm happy uh, to answer any that uh, may come. Okay, the first question. With an, uh, with an abundance of natural foods available, is there a recommendation for a seed mixture to offer so it will make our feeders more inviting? Uh, as said, uh, mealworms are a great ad addition uh, also in summer, but uh, besides seed mixture, uh, you may also uh, simply add uh, fresh fruits, uh, which you have to um, 
monitor regularly because uh, summer is also the period where uh, fruit can go bad uh, sooner than, uh, rather sooner than later. So uh, those two types are more important uh, in summer. Um, seed mixture can be the same. Uh, so sunflowers, uh, so, uh, other, other kinds of seed. Uh, so a second question. When hummingbirds disappear from the feeder for a couple of weeks, is it because they are tending for their young? Yes. Uh, hummingbirds are specialists on, on the nectar, but they feed their young exclusively uh, insects and maybe spiders. Uh, most of the insects are, ca uh, are catched uh, in the air. So at that period, uh, at least females, because males are wandering around and trying to find another female, but at least females are avoiding uh, not avoiding, but spend less time uh, at the feeders uh, simply because they are catching something completely else uh, for, the, uh, for, uh, for their young. Uh, so the, uh, the answer is yes, they are tending for, uh, for their young, uh, to their young. Uh, a third question. I, I can see adult sparrows feeding their youngsters at my, uh, in my bird body. Is the same case as you talked about? They are just sitting on the bench and waiting. Yes, uh, it's uh, f actually uh, really uh, funny uh, if you want to uh, picture, uh, translate this to, to humans. It would be like coming to a, uh, uh, to a restaurant and your teenager will be, uh, would be sitting there uh, looking at you, uh, waiting for you to slice him a pizza and feeding I I into, the, uh, into the mouth. Yeah. So, in, in, in this case, yeah, it's completely uh, uh, funny. But on the other hand, uh, hand as I mentioned, yes, um, young have no experience. Uh, it would be uh, the same as this uh, teenager I'm talking about uh, would, would just realize uh, or just come to be uh, a week before. And now you have to teach everything to him uh, in a, before he, he's an adult uh, and he's ready for, for a life. Uh, so yes, the, the answer is uh, yes. This is the case I, I, uh, I, I described. So sparrows are feeding their young uh, on, the, on the feeder and they're showing them what to eat. And for uh, sparrows and uh, other b uh, feeder, bird feeder visiting species, this is actually very easy. Uh, to show him where to find seeds is much less difficult uh, than to uh, trying to teach your young where to uh, hunt for, let's say, rabbits and how to catch them. Because this is not simply of, okay, so uh, in theory, if I fly there, there is a rabbit, I can catch it. Now, you still need to um, develop a lot of skills because a uh, rabbit will not cooperate. Um, another, uh, the next question, what are your recommendations on feeding birds in summer? We see lots of advice from various sources that we should not put out feeders in summer as the birds need to learn to fend for themselves. Uh, yes. Uh, I partly agree with uh, with the later uh, uh, let, uh, with the um, the second part of the uh, of what, uh, of the question or what is written. Uh, birds n do need to uh, learn how to fend for themselves, uh, but fending for themselves uh, m means um, finding food, recognizing food, uh, recognizing predators and uh, learning how to avoid predators. And learning how to avoid predators is very, it's actually uh, more difficult at feeders. So if they do uh, learn that at feeders, they will be, uh, have a better uh, advantage later in life. Uh, considering that they will become lazy if you feed them in summer, uh, not exploring other areas, this is maybe true for very limited uh, number of species. Mostly the species that are very sedentary, they don't leave uh, their places and they move maybe a few hundred meters or maybe a, a few kilometers from the, uh, from the same place. Yes, in that case, uh, this would be bad. Uh, but in most cases, 
as a, uh, for example, chickadees. Uh, chickadees do visit uh, bird feeders in the summer, uh, and but they also uh, move in a lot of uh, areas. Uh, they are they are moving not because of uh, the searching only for food, but also for avoiding predators. The, the parents know that if they stay at the same feeder f uh, for longer period, it is much. A uh, higher probability they, that they will lose their uh, their young. So they just move about. They visit uh, feeder, uh, but they are already gone the next day. So uh, I wouldn't say uh, I wouldn't say not to feed uh, b uh, birds in summer. But you could, uh, but when you are thinking about feeding them, you may also uh, think of feeding other species that are present uh, uh, in. Uh, around your place that do, do, do not necessarily come for uh, seeds uh, just uh, by putting uh, some um, uh, fresh fruit out for them or maybe just providing uh, water which is also nice. Um, you do, do not need to provide a lot of seeds uh, to be there and this will also reduce uh, those species that uh, uh, tend to uh, hang around. Uh, the feeder. Uh, next question: Are the di uh, dehydrated, uh, dehydrated f fruits uh, okay? Yes, actually they are. Uh, they are better in in autumn and, uh, and winter when uh, some b uh, bird species are actually very fond of them. Uh, uh, but uh, they also work in summer, especially if you don't have time for regularly uh, to regularly check whether or not uh, uh, you, uh, the, the fr fresh fruits are uh, going bad or the mold is uh, approaching. Uh, dehydrated fruits are, uh, are okay. Ma mainly uh, small berries like, I don't know, raisins or, um, uh, or s something similar. Uh, next questions. Uh, what do you think about wind turbines? I think it sucks. They kill a lot of birds and insects. Um, well, my personal opinion about wind turbine is, well, they do uh, cause a lot of damage. Uh, compared to many other cause, uh, causes of mortality uh, that we have uh, in Northern Hemisphere, um, or uh, or the other pla or around the world for that matter um, wind turbine mortality is actually very very small the problems with wind turbine mortality is that it uh, uh, it affects specific kind of species and those species are either large uh, reproduce slowly or or are already in danger uh, I wouldn't uh, expose insects uh, as a problem, especially because there is very low uh, study. Uh, there there are uh, study cases for that, but I would uh, point out that uh, b uh, bats have uh, way more problems uh, than insects with uh, wind turbines. Um, now the society and the development is going towards the renewable uh, energy and like it or not, wind turbine is a part of that. Maybe somewhere in the future we will, uh, we will remove uh, wind turbines or there will be uh, completely differently, uh, they will be differently uh, structured so they will not have as much impact as they do today. Uh, but today uh, what the most we can do is uh, be there when the, uh, the turbines are placed in the environment and try to uh, Select the uh, the area with as uh, that causes least um, problems uh, that will cause least problems later. Uh, would motion in a birth bed be better? Um, definitely. Uh, if you have a slow running. Uh, stream uh, on your uh, property, even uh, artificially made, that is actually also nice. Uh, just make sure that uh, somewhere along the stream there is a shallow place 
uh, with enough standing water uh, that the bird can uh, simply stand there and bathe. Um, just make sure that uh, in, the, in the stream the, the water is not moving too fast. Um, so so uh, just make uh, uh, have it, uh, in mind uh, how fast it, uh, the water is flowing and if there is uh, how shallow it is. Okay. Next question, are there any migrating birds that breed in the northern hemisphere and then breed again in the southern hemisphere? Uh, I would say there is a case in that and uh, barn swallow is one of the cases that breeds also in the southern hemisphere, M uh, but I'm not sure whether or not those are the same individuals. Uh, you it is theoretic theoretically possible because uh, in both cases there is a lot of energy, a lot of food available. Um, the problem is that migration, uh, very long migration is very energy demanding and having another clutch is also quite en energy demanding. Uh, what I do know is that barn swallows are also nesting, for example, in South Africa and this may uh, result from individuals that nested somewhere in Northern Hemisphere and later nested in the Southern Hemisphere. But the rule uh, he here is that uh, the majority, if not almost all of the species, do not breed uh, on, both, uh, on both sides. Uh, another question, um, somebody is as asking for help. Uh, the, the Grecos are eating everything and seem to be quite bullish. Um, yeah, that is a problem. So uh, when you set up your feeder, there are two types of birds that will make your life uh, a bit more uh, difficult. One of them are either very numerous, like uh, house finches, house sparrows, and they will occupy uh, your feeder and stay there. Uh, the other group of birds are large birds, Will may not be uh, in uh, great numbers, but they are, um, uh, but they will not be um, uh, allowing other birds to, uh, to attend. In both cases, uh, birds are just sitting on the bird table or bird feeder and uh, do not allow for other birds uh, to, to come near and also uh, devour most of the food that you put out. Um, the biggest recommendation here is that if you have the opportunity, which may have some limitations, for example, with uh, bird body, because bird body needs to be close to uh, a Wi-Fi uh, connection, uh, but for other uh, uh, feeders, uh, but and if you have a chance for that uh, with uh, bird body, change location. So changing location uh, to the other side of the uh, uh, of the property, to the other side of the uh, house, if that's possible, uh, will for a short period uh, baffle uh, the un un unwanted uh, bird species. Um, you have uh, two types of birds that come to the feeders. Well, you have more, more than two, but two, two extreme types. One of them are searchers. Uh, those like chickadees, uh, uh, nuthatches, maybe even uh, woodpeckers, they are uh, always searching and moving around. Those are the species that uh, find birds much, much faster than, uh, the, uh, than the others. So. If you change location, you will at least for a period of time, we uh, will be again having a lot of uh, other species um, that you, um, uh, that you uh, actually want. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if the changing location is not a possibility, just remove your feeder for maybe two weeks. Uh, especially the species that tend to find a food source and occupy it and stay there. Uh, when losing that food source, they will mo move uh, away, uh, trying to find a new source that will, they will occupy. So you will, at least for a, a time period, uh, they will leave your feeder uh, at peace and you, when you set up uh, your feeder again, you will ha again have a bigger diversity of species. Uh, 
uh, it seems we have one more questions. Uh, one more question. Uh, I have noticed many finches and sparrows standing in my feeder while eating. To attract cardinals and others, uh, do I need a perch? Uh, they, uh, are they more, more looking to not have to stand in food? Um, they don't care about whether or not they stand in food. Um, we, uh, when, when you use an open feeder, so uh, just a feeding table, uh, they stand in the middle of seats and they have no problems with that. They actually, uh, they, don't, uh, they have no morals of defecating in the seats, so you need to uh, be mindful of that uh, in, uh, when you are cleaning uh, uh, your, your feeder. Uh, perch helps. In some cases, uh, especially when the bird is larger, uh, simply because it enables larger birds to st uh, to actually get to the feeder. Um, in, that's why you get s uh, some species uh, in higher frequency on bird tables as opposed to closed feeders, uh, simply because uh, they need their space. Uh, when we are talking about bird body, perch is a substitute for a bird table. Uh, it enables uh, larger birds to stand there, uh, look, uh, enables them to lo uh, look around and still get to the food. Uh, but it's not, an, uh, it's not necessi necessity for most birds. Uh, it may be necessity, for example, for uh, some doves or pigeons. Uh, but even, even they, uh, if they want to get to the food, they maneuver it and uh, they, will get, uh, they get it. Uh, it seems we ran out of, uh, of questions. I thank you all for your questions. They were interesting uh, and I was happy to answer them. Uh, I hope I see you uh, at another Bird Academy uh, and for, uh, for which I welcome you. And for now, I bid you goodbye.